Up next, we're going to show you how to pick out collars for your electric underground dog fence. All right, Brian, so both of us installed underground electric fences last year, last summer, and we have yep. a video about that. And uh, now we want to talk about more specifically, how do you pick out the right collar? Right. Because when you get the fence, you install the fence, that's one part of it. But the other part, and one of the more expensive items, is actually choosing the right collar. That's right. And when you buy the kit, that's, you're going to kind of buy the kit based upon the collar that you need, and, and the, as well as the coverage that you need. Right. And there's obviously a difference between a small dog like I have. This is Savannah. She's very small. So I wanted a collar that was smaller for her. Right. And interestingly, you know, not all manufacturers make them in different sizes. So you want to find one that's small. But as we're going to show, there's pros and cons. So you have a bigger collar for your dog. Right. This would work, but it would be really big for Savannah if I used it. And it would be, you know, it's heavy, right. heavier. This is lighter. But there's other pros and cons for these collars. Why don't you tell us why you selected this collar? So I went with this because uh, it seemed a little more waterproof and rugged. I have a dog that, that likes to run through the woods, chase animals, you know, stuff like that. And another key feature of this one is that it's rechargeable. So it has this little power pack we plug into the wall, and once a month or so we just drop the collar onto the charger, and in a couple hours it's charged up, ready to go. All right, and so, like I said, I chose this collar because it's very small, and uh, it is not rechargeable, though. And that's why it's small, because it doesn't need as big of a battery, and it uses really small batteries. Do you have a coin on you, Brian, so I can get this? Yeah, uh, maybe. See, you need a coin, and you grab the coin, and it actually has a specific battery for this collar. Here we go. Oh, there it is. I had it in the wrong spot. So you turn it to this little arrow here, which I wasn't seeing, and then it comes out. And you can see the battery is part of this little knob, which is water resistant. It has a nice little seal on it. But you have to buy this whole thing. You can't just buy okay. the battery. You're buying this piece every time the battery runs out. And the battery lasts about a month. And uh, then you have to replace it. And you can get it to last longer if you remember every day you're done using it to turn it in the off position. Okay. It'll then last longer. So. That is a price you pay. What is a small. what does a battery cost? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about. Uh, I think they're not five bucks. Uh, eight yeah, bucks? I think they're five or ten bucks a piece. They're not cheap. Okay. So that's something you want to take into account. Up next, we're going to just show you quickly the differences on how you adjust the uh, the strength of the correction on these. Okay. Colors. Okay, so all of these collars have some type of adjustable correction level. If you have a very stubborn dog, you're going to need to look for a collar that has corrections for stubborn dogs. You, could, um, you can get some that are adjustable. You can also get some that automatically adjust. So this collar, Brian, has five settings. The first one just emits a sound, and that's what you use when you begin to train your dog. And then each setting has uh, a stronger correction level. So it's very simple. You just you hit the button once, and a light will beep showing you the level that it's on. So it beeped five times, so it's on the strongest setting. And I think you just hit it again within a few seconds, and now it goes to setting one, and you hit it again, and it'll go to two. Two beeps, that's on the second setting. So that's how you set it. It's pretty simple. Usually once you get it to how you, your, your setting that you want, now that she's been trained, then you're good to go, and you just put the thing on, and, and you'd and have you're it at ready. the lowest level setting, probably just as a reminder, just uh, in case. I, no, you usually put it somewhat high because okay. occasionally she'll decide she might want to go through that fence, okay. and you want a reminder that that's a bad idea. She right. could get hit by a car, which is far worse than the correction that you're going right. to get on this collar. Now, one like this has an automatic correction level, so as you get close, it beeps. You get a little bit closer, then it's a, a mild correction. You get closer and it gets a little higher correction, so forth and so on. Okay. Um, so there is no manual adjustment of the correction level. This may not be good for a very stubborn dog that doesn't really care about the correction. Um, and it also has some features like if, if the dog gets scared and just stops and freezes, uh, it shuts it off after 10 seconds. Hmm. So Now, one of the other things you want to take, keep in mind is that they have these sensors on these, and these were actually, uh, they actually cr create the correction. 
uh, on the dog. And um, some dogs are so fluffy that you, they have a hard time making contact right, with the dog. Right, right, right. You can buy uh, replacements for these that are bigger. And right. these will these unscrew and these little sensors. Right, and, so, and they'll go yeah. into through the thicker the fur, fur. Right. So this dog uh, gets pretty furry at times, but this I still have found that this works fine. Right. So. I have a short-haired dog, so I have the shortest possible leads little on, on Okay, ours. and we'll put all of these models in the description for this video down below. And uh, so you can see exactly what collars we bought. But it's important to make sure you figure out the collar even before you, you figure out what system you're going to buy That's for your right. electric underground fence. So there you have it. We're the Handy Guys, and thanks for watching. Thanks.